This is the new 2024 GMC Hummer EV SUV, and it's something. It has 830 horsepower for sports car acceleration, up to 16 inches of ground clearance for serious off-road capability, and it's fully electric for planet-saving efficiency. It also has a sticker price of well over $100,000. And today, I'm going to review the new Hummer SUV and show you all of its quirks and features. Today's video is brought to you by Cars and Bids, my online enthusiast car auction site that recently sold this and this and this and this and this. All right, let's begin with the craziest quirks of the Hummer EV SUV, starting with the fact that it can drive diagonally. They call this crab walk mode, and to activate it, you hold down this button in the center. You can see the wheels kind of all going in the same diagonal direction. You press that, and then the front and rear wheels do indeed go in the same direction, so it drives diagonally, which is totally mind-blowing both to look at and to experience when you're sitting inside the vehicle. Crab walk mode. I don't think it has any true real-world application, but it's certainly a fun parking lot flex to show your friends when you get one of these. Now, the reason it can crab walk is because it has four-wheel steering. Both the front and rear wheels steer. And check this out. When you turn around, the turning radius is tremendously small despite this vehicle's huge size. In fact, General Motors says it has the same turning radius as the Chevy Bolt. It's tiny little electric car. This giant SUV is the same because of that four-wheel steering. Now, another great quirk, of course, in an SUV, you got a cargo area in back, no surprise, but here you also have a massive front trunk. You open it up and you can see huge extra cargo storage space in front in addition to what you have in back. And as you might expect, it's a Hummer, so it's very off-road capable. You put it in the highest suspension setting, which you're looking at right now, and you have 16 inches of ground clearance, which is absolutely huge. This thing can roll over anything, and it will crush it because this weighs 9,200 pounds. Absolutely a massive vehicle with all those batteries. And check this out. Even though this looks like a normal SUV, SUV, you can get a full open air driving experience because this is a convertible. You can remove the top panels in front and in back to have a fully open feel sitting in the car. And it gets even better. There's a hidden button to the left of the steering wheel. You push it and all of the windows go down at once. One press and all of the windows are down, which is a tremendously cool feature. And it even includes the rear window in the tailgate in the cargo area. So you can take off the roof and lower all the windows for a fully open experience in the Hummer EV. And there are so many more quirks and features to cover, but first let's talk through some of the basics of the Hummer EV SUV. Now, I have already reviewed the pickup truck version of this, which is called the Hummer EV Pickup. The SUV is about a foot shorter, and of course it has an enclosed cargo area like an SUV, but the basic idea is the same. This is a revival of the Hummer brand, which has been dead for about a decade, except now in a fully electric vehicle, but with the same brawny styling and marketing as before. Now, there are various different versions of the Hummer EV SUV, and the base model starts around $80,000. It has 625 horsepower, but this, this is the brute. The 3X version, as they call it, has a starting price of around $107,000, and it has 800 130 horsepower, a massive number. Now, despite its giant size and, well, probably poor aerodynamics, it still does about 300 miles of fully electric range, and it goes from 0 to 60 in three and a half seconds, which is on the level of supercars. It's faster than my Porsche Carrera GT. The drawback is the curb weight. Like I mentioned, 9,200 pounds, and that's how you got to do it. Just keep adding batteries to get 
that range and acceleration figure to where you want them. They've done that, but it's come at the expense of a massively heavy vehicle. But anyway, next onto the rest of the quirks and features, starting with getting in, this is the key fob, which actually is a little disappointing for $110,000 is just a regular old GMC truck key fob. It's not particularly special, even though this vehicle is, but you open up the door and the first thing you notice is this speaker cover, which is covered in all sorts of weird lines. That's intended to represent the surface of the moon. And you can see this little shoe print, which is supposed to be a moon boot. This theme is carried over to a lot of spaces inside this truck. You can see on the floor mats, the surface of the moon graphic, and even on the base of this storage area under the center console, more surface of the moon. When I was reviewing the pickup version, GM told me they did this because this truck is their moonshot, hence all of the moon graphics, and they've carried it over into the SUV as well. Now, beyond the moon graphics, there are little hidden Easter eggs all throughout this vehicle. Like, for instance, the little image of the truck at the side of the center screen. You wouldn't really notice it, but it's there. Same deal in the corner of the windshield. You see this image of the Hummer EV just sort of tucked in there, kind of subtle. Man, how about the fact that the door or sill, this graphic you can see right here, matches the front end lighting design in the vehicle. They're the same, and that lighting design is carried over to this graphic in the door sill. In fact, if you look closely, you will notice that the lights at the edges of the front end make little H logos, H for Hummer, and that is also repeated all throughout this truck in various places. Just one example is the center climate vents here in the interior. You can see they sort of form this H pattern again, which is supposed to stand for Hummer. Anyway, you climb inside the Hummer EV, and one of the first things you notice is it's surprisingly luxurious in here. Even though you probably don't think of this as luxurious, it's off-road capable and fast and brutish, but it's nice. All of the materials in here are high quality, they feel good, they look good. It is a nice interior with shockingly luxurious, high-quality materials. To me, the only real draw back, the only real place they cheaped out, aside from the key fob I already showed you, is the stocks for the turn signals and the windshield wipers. General Motors borrowed these stocks from other vehicles in their portfolio that are a lot cheaper than this one, and boy do they feel it. Flimsy and not correctly placed, they're sitting too high up, and they just look and feel bad. And it's annoying they cheap out on that, which is something you frequently touch. I don't get why GM can't get this right. But other than that little detail, frankly, the rest of this interior really does look nice. I especially like the look and feel of the switches and controls in the center control stack. All these little switches, they look cool, they're in a line, they're very well placed, and they feel nice to press with their texture on top, and they have kind of a cool operation, frankly. For instance, the switch to change the climate control temperature is at the end here, you move it up or down, and you can see the temperature changes corresponding on the screen, which is cool. But the really neat idea in here is the switches that allow the screen to do multiple things. Let me give you an example. The heated seat control, you press here to activate the heated seat control, and then the rest of the screen dims and two new controls appear, one for heated and one for cooled seats that you can adjust with the switches next to it. When you're done with the heated seats, they go away, and then those switches go back to their regular function. Same deal with the air placement coming out of the vents, whether you want it bottom, center, or top, you press that and then you have a choice that you can use other switches to control. Now, this is a cool idea because it limits the number of switches you have to have since one switch can have multiple different controls. Only drawback in this control switch area, they've used the graphic for the pickup truck for the recirculating air diagram, even though this very clearly is the SUV. By the way, speaking of switches, one thing worth mentioning, I showed you there's a button that will lower all the windows, including a window in the tailgate, but if you want to lower the tailgate windows separately and not all the rest, the switch is up here next to the rear view mirror. You press here and then the tailgate drops or you pull it the other direction and the tailgate goes back up. Pretty simple, but you can operate that separately from the windows. 
Now, and speaking of controls, the mode dial in the center console is rather interesting. So the control on the left activates crab walk and four wheel steering like I showed you before. Press it up or down and this raises or lowers the suspension height of the vehicle to add or subtract ground clearance, pretty standard. The one on the right is really interesting. It's a triangle with a little H logo in it. You press that and the only thing that happens is an email address pops up in the gauge cluster screen asking for tips or suggestions. General Motors specifically told me they're actually interested in customer feedback. What cool things could they add to the truck? And so if you want to send them feedback, that email address is available if you just tap that button. Now, the dial going around this drive mode selector, of course, changes the different drive modes of the truck from various off-road modes to tow or haul to normal mode, sport. This is how you adjust your drive modes in this truck, and it all shows up on the screen. And speaking of the screen, let's talk screen for a second. There is a massive screen here in the center of this interior, and of course, it controls a lot of different functions. It is very responsive and very easy to use. You tap, and it instantly does basically exactly what you'd expect, just like a good smartphone would. It's a really good screen, well thought out, intuitive, and it has some cool features. Probably the best is all of the off-road information displays. It shows you everything everything from your steering angle to the pitch and roll of the vehicle to the current tire pressure, your altitude, elevation, all of this stuff, latitude, longitude is displayed for when you're off-roading and it might actually come in handy. You also have Google Maps in here. That's the built-in map feature in all of the new General Motors vehicles and it's great to use. I love using Google Maps on my phone. Here it is built into this truck and one cool feature even with the map up, you can have an extra screen come up on the side that's configurable. You can have it show various different things depending on exactly what it is you want to see. One other great feature of this truck's screen is the camera system, which is of course displayed here. GMC says 17 different camera angles in this truck, including two waterproof cameras underneath the truck, so you can see everywhere and everything at any time, and virtually all the camera angles are high resolution displayed on this screen. Very nice to see. And speaking of cameras and screens, let's talk about the rear view mirror, which right now just looks like a rear view mirror until you flip this switch and then it's a camera. This is a great feature because it shows what's behind you. Even if your truck is full of people and stuff you can't see out, well, now you can because your rear view mirror is a camera. I love having that. And on the subject of screens, one more screen worth pointing out is, of course, the gauge cluster screen behind the steering wheel. This one is only so-so, I would say. You can see all the moon graphics on it, continuing that cool theme from a lot of the other points in the car, but the drawback of this screen is, frankly, it's not really all that configurable. You can adjust what's on the left part of the screen and show a few different pre-chosen things, but not much. On the right side of the screen, you have more options. You can show music, you can show directions, your phone, that sort of thing, but even then, you can't do a full-screen map in the gauge cluster, which is disappointing, and you can't have it show like music and map at once. For a screen gauge cluster, which could be configured in many different ways, this one is surprisingly stuck in its default position. And by the way, since I'm over here in the steering wheel area, two other things to mention. Number one, this vehicle has GM's Super Cruise driver assist technology, which is hands-off driving on mapped roads. It's an excellent feature. Also worth pointing out, that button that lowers all the windows at once that's very cool, for some reason, it doesn't raise them. <laughs> so if you want to lower all the windows at once, you can do that. But when you want to put them back up, you got to pull each window switch individually and the switch for the rear window because you can't do it from that button, which frankly is, well, just not a good idea. It should lower and raise the windows. And next up, we move on to the back seat in the Hummer EV, which is well, massive. This front seat is pushed really far back, and I still have knee room back here. There's a ton of hip room. It's very wide, and there's headroom before you get to the convertible top panels. It really is a huge front and back seat, a giant interior in this vehicle. And by the way, worth mentioning on the convertible top panels, 
the removal is quite easy. All you have to do is move this latch, that unlatches one side, move this latch and back, that unlatches the other, and then lift the top panel right off. That's all you do front and rear. There's no unscrewing anything or difficult stuff. You gotta remove this before that, whatever. Just two latches and you can take it off and you're good to go for your open air experience. And you can remove them individually. So if just one person wants an open air experience, but nobody else does, well, you can do that if that's what you want. Anyway, other items worth pointing out in the back seat. For one, the moon graphics theme continues back here. Again, on the speaker cover, the moon graphics return, and on the floor, again, you can see the moon graphics in the rubber. Back here, you also have some nice luxury touches. You have heated rear seats, which is nice to see, and climate control just for the rear passengers, in addition to climate vents, which of course adds to the comfort level back here. You also have power ports, you can see USB-C and USB-A. Both of those are nice to have, but even better, you look further down and there is a household style power outlet down here where you can plug in your blender and blend while you sit in the back. And next we move on to the back of the Hummer EV SUV where you can see an absolutely massive spare tire mounted back here. This is a full-size spare tire and wheel. And if you look closely at the wheel design, you'll notice little H's in all of the spokes. And it says HEV around one part of the side of the wheel. And right in the center, you have that H logo appearing once again. A lot of little hidden things. But anyway, giant spare tire, giant spare wheel. And the result of that is that the tailgate is tremendously heavy in this vehicle. And it would be hard to open it up, especially if you're on a hill. So they automated it. You want to open up the tailgate, you just push this little button hidden here below the tail light on the driver's side and the tailgate opens right up automatically. You don't have to lift a finger except for the one you use to push the button. Anyway, once you get into the cargo area, you will notice, well, first the moon graphics continue. The entire floor of the cargo area is this moon relief map, which is kind of cool and certainly kind of odd, but I actually like how it looks. But you will also notice some pros and cons in this cargo area. The biggest benefit is undoubtedly its shape and size. It is flat, it is wide, it is tall, and you do not suffer from a tapering teardrop shaped roof line that robs you of tall cargo space. You got a lot of space back here. One of the big drawbacks is height to get things in. Presumably there are batteries located under this cargo floor and so it is a big lift to get heavy items up over the bumper and then over this lip and actually into the cargo area. It's a long way you gotta lift stuff. Now, you'll notice when you do lift it over, it lifts over again the front lighting design now placed here subtly in the cargo area. Again, the little H front lights on each side. There you see that again. Like I said, a lot of hidden Easter eggs throughout this vehicle. Now, in the cargo area, there are a few nifty little tricks. For one, this storage cubby on the left side is surprisingly large. So for smaller, valuable items you don't want them rolling around, you can stick them in here. You also have another household charger in the cargo area, which is obviously nice to have, an additional practical touch. And over on the other side, there's switches to put down the back seats. You can see left and right. You press them and the seats go down. Now these are not power operated, so you can't put them back up. You can only put them down. If you want to put them back up, you got to go to the seat itself and lift it into place. Not too hard, but not quite as convenient. Now, one other drawback about this cargo area, there's no third row seating in this vehicle. Doesn't exist at all, it's not offered. Despite this gargantuan sized Hummer, you can't get it with a third row. Probably because the seat would have to sit so high in the cargo area above the batteries that there really wouldn't be any headroom. It's kind of a drawback and it loses some practicality to say the Rivian R1S, which does have three row seating. With that said, one nice little benefit of the cargo area, you lift up the floor and there's a little extra storage space down there for your charging cables or other smaller items that you can fit in this space. And by the way, when you're done in the cargo area, you don't have to grab it and pull it closed. Same deal as before. You just press this little button and it automatically closes right up. There's also a button on the key fob that does the very same thing. You never have to lift anything. 
And if the rear wasn't enough cargo storage area for you, well, you're in luck because the Hummer EV has a front trunk too. You can open it several different ways. There's a button to the left of the steering wheel. You can see here, push that and it opens. There's a button on the key fob, push that and it opens. Or there is a hidden button under the front bumper right about here. You press it and the front trunk pops open automatically. Again, you don't have to do a thing. Now, when the front trunk is open, you can see it's actually fairly large. There's a decent amount of space in here. This front trunk is more relevant for the pickup truck version of the Hummer EV because it has a tailgate which is exposed. And so if you want an enclosed area, you have that too. But even with the SUV, it does give you more cargo space, which is nice to have. Now, not too many interesting things going on in the front trunk. You have a little power port, a cigarette lighter outlet style power port. Then you also have bags in here with the Hummer image on it, as you can see. These bags are supposed to be used for storing the roof panels when you remove them. So they're included in here and you can stick them in the front trunk. Other than that, nothing else particularly interesting up here, although it's worth pointing out the front trunk does power close as well. You push the button and it automatically closes. Just like in back, you don't have to do any work yourself. Now, with the front trunk closed, you can see a few interesting exterior quirks and features of the Hummer EV. One is, like I've mentioned before, the lighting design up front. You can see Hummer is actually illuminated in what would be the front grille. Instead, it's lighting. And at the edges, you have larger running lights that are also turn signals. And when you turn them on, they make this cool sweep across the front of the vehicle that looks nice and it's pretty distinctive and kind of exciting. Now, other interesting items up here, for one, three windshield wipers, as you can see. Because of the wide but low design of the windshield, you need three wipers to cover the whole thing. Not too common, but this has it. And it also has a GMC badge up here, although you'd be forgiven for not noticing it. It's small and placed off to the side in the corner, not front and center like every other GMC. That's because the emphasis here is on the Hummer brand brand, not on the GMC brand. These are sold through GMC dealers and they're technically GMCs, but people will think of them as the Hummer, not really a GMC. So the only GMC logos right here in front off to the side and one other in back. Otherwise, it's all Hummer branding. And that, of course, also goes for the exterior styling, which looks very brutish, very brawny, very aggressive, very Hummer. Urgh, this thing says, revitalizing the old school Hummer image from the original Hummer and the H2. This is supposed to look like a modern day take on that, and it certainly does. It definitely looks Hummer, and it definitely looks in your face, which I think is exactly what they were going for. There's nothing subtle about this truck except for this tiny little American flag on the side that you might not notice unless you're looking closely. But it's there and it's accurate for this vehicle. Of course, General Motors, an American manufacturer, and this vehicle is built in America in Detroit, Michigan. Anyway, all of that said, all the quirks and features, another big quirk is just driving the Hummer EV. So let's go do it. All right, driving the Hummer EV SUV. I have wanted to drive this vehicle for quite a while, actually, because one of my guilty pleasure cars is the Hummer EV truck. But I'm not really a truck guy. I live in the city. I don't really have a huge need for a truck. An SUV is more my speed. I got kids. This is what I would get if I were getting a Hummer EV. Uh, so I've wanted to drive it for a while, but honestly, it's been hard to find them because production has been really, really slow. These came out maybe six months ago, seven months ago, but there are very few of them around. They're just not building in massive numbers. But I'm in it now, and I've been driving it for a couple days, and I gotta say, I just think it's cool. I think it's really cool. And that has not been the general reception for the Hummer EV. It's been actually kind of interesting because they came out with a vehicle that was intended to appeal to an audience that isn't really into electric cars. So I was kind of curious how that was gonna go. And the answer is it went predictably, not all that well. These are not selling at a huge clip and used the values have really started to decline. But from a purely vehicle perspective, just like the sheer act of driving it and looking at it and having it, 
I think it's so cool. I think it looks cool. It's a little over the top brutish, but I think it looks cool. I think it drives awesome. It is so fast. Um, it can roll over anything. The interior is great. It's surprisingly comfortable in here. There's a lot to like in this vehicle. I think ultimately the problem with the Hummer EV, and I'm going to be delicate here for political reasons, is that this type of vehicle would generally appeal to conservative people who don't buy EVs. But EVs tend to appeal to liberal people who don't buy giant brutish Hummers. And as a result, this truck has not really done all that well. Uh, but as somebody who's kind of a little bit more moderate and who just likes cars for purely what they are, I think this is so cool. Now, I will say there are a few drawbacks uh, of the driving experience. The most obvious one when you're driving this vehicle is wind noise. Um, that wasn't something I made real note of in the EV pickup truck, which also has a removable roof. But there's no question that it is the removable roof that is the problem. There are four panels here on top, plus there are doors all around and windows that roll up and down. There's a lot of removable stuff in this vehicle. And so even something a little bit off or even if it's implanted how it's designed, but just, you know, the tolerances aren't perfect, you get some wind noise, especially at highway speeds like I'm going. Another issue with the truck is just its gargantuan size. You got to kind of plan, hey, can I really get past those things? Just because the car in front of me got past it doesn't mean I can. I'm driving the biggest car on the road. And it's really a heavy, large vehicle, this. You also get some tire noise and you get some tire, you feel a little bit from the tires because they're these big, rough, all-terrain tires. Um, so it doesn't quite have like a luxury car smooth ride, but it has a pretty smooth ride. It is surprising just how comfortable and nice it really is, considering that it's an all-terrain, off-road, you know, menace that can go over anything. Personally, I've driven all the electric vehicles, every single one of them, from the Rivian to the Lucid to all the Teslas to this. And I really think that the Hummer EV, above all the others, does the best job of doing it all in one vehicle. It's fast, it's luxurious, it's off-road capable. The problem is the way it looks in the price tag. If this was a $75,000 SUV that looked like a Rivian or a Range Rover or a Kia Telluride, this would be one of the hottest selling vehicles on the planet. But because they made it more brutish and more Hummer-like, they definitely alienated people, especially a lot of the people who buy electric cars. And at the $110,000 to $120,000 price point, that's big money. One other thing I want to address, by the way, with the Hummer AV, a lot of people complain about this, oh, it's not very efficient. Oh, you know, it only gets 45 miles per gallon E equivalent. Um, the batteries are so big, it takes forever to charge. And it's just not an efficient EV. And I think that is one of the stupidest criticisms. I mean, yeah, that's true. But when you think about what else is in this segment for gas powered cars, my Toyota Sequoia is smaller than this. It has half the horsepower of this, and yet it gets 12 miles per gallon. This doubles the power, increases the size, and still manages to be an electric car. Of course, it is not as efficient as a Tesla or a Fiat 500 electric or Lucid Air, all those vehicles. But when you think about the kinds of vehicles that this would be competing against as a gas car, it actually is a pretty impressively efficient car. The miles per gallon equivalent numbers are like 50 MPGE, which is better than a Toyota Corolla. And I'm driving around in a brutish block-shaped Hummer that can do zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. And so from that perspective, it is pretty good. Frankly, this is just a great all-around vehicle if you can put up with the styling, the heft, the size, the weight, and a little bit of lack of refinement from wind noise and tire noise. And so that's the new GMC Hummer EV SUV, a massive beastly brute that combines aggressive Hummer styling with environmentally friendly electric vehicle efficiency, with supercar-like acceleration, with off-road capability, with convertible driving experience, and a luxury interior and great technology. It really can do it all, except fit in a garage. <laughs> and now it's time to give the Hummer EV SUV a Doug score.
And the Doug score is here, 72 out of 100, which puts the Hummer EV SUV here against rivals. Actually, pretty high up, closing in on some of my favorite EVs like the Rivian R1S. But the Hummer EV SUV won't sell. And the problem really is that it's a car for nobody. EV people don't want a vehicle that looks like this, and people who want a vehicle that looks like this don't want an EV. Personally, I think it's incredibly cool, and it does it all. It's fast, it's capable off-road, it's high-tech, it's planet-saving electric, and it's even a convertible. But buyers seem to prefer the more traditional R1S and the Tesla Model X, and frankly, I'm not surprised. Too bad, because the Hummer EV SUV really is a good car.